Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Michelle Aubin and Linda Lang. Hi, everyone. This is Linda Lang with Michelle Aubin on today's podcast. And today I thought it would be really fun to talk about guidance and how we all have access to guidance and what a difference that has made for both of our lives. Are you game for that, Michelle? I'm game, Linda. And I love, I love the topic this week because anyone who embarks on a self-healing journey on any level is going to find themselves tuning in to various types of guidance from within. So that's an exciting topic. Totally agree. And even for people who aren't on their healing journey, it's incredibly empowering when we can connect with our own guidance and learn how to trust and follow it. Incredible things can present themselves on our path because we become sovereign, I'd like to say. We, we become the masters of our own experience. I love that word sovereign. That's, there's so many meanings and resonances with that concept. So maybe we should talk about what that means. Because some people, I've used that word with, some people don't always know what that means. But for me, it means being aware of the power I have to make choices, to perceive things, to be the, to perceive things accurately, to be the authority in my own life, to be the creator. And I don't want to kind of make it sound like, you know, sort of this phrase is tossed around, we create our own reality, which can seem like sometimes a threatening concept when we're in the middle of a struggle. I mean, I remember being um, angry at that concept. But this idea of sovereignty is that we can kind of hone in on things a little more clearly, a little more powerfully, little by little, but, but getting to that place of feeling um, empowered. That's kind of how I want to use that word. It can mean so many things, but what about you? I totally agree with you. For me, being sovereign means I am the authority in my life. And it's my responsibility to make my own choices and not, not be searching outside all the time and giving my power away, depending on what other people think or what other people expect. It's really a sense of, you know, some things there aren't really good words for energetically, but it's a core strength of who you are and that you're enough and that this is your life and your choices are the most important thing in your life. Yeah. And when we can listen to the inner guidance that we receive, it just naturally supports us for the highest possible good. And yet there are times, all of what you say I agree with, and yet there are times when I was off track with some of that guidance and I'm recalling a time when I was getting some medical diagnoses and getting a lot of tests and really involved with the sort of medical system in a way that felt exhausting and painful physically and in a way that I didn't feel listened to and my view of healing was not a part of that system. So I sort of felt like on an assembly line almost. And I, it was like one test, another test. We need to confirm this, go get this. And I got into this panic trance is what I call it. And I remember being like thinking catastrophically, bad things are going to happen. If I don't keep getting more tests and more treatments, it's, it's not going to go well. And I was sort of in that mindset, which 
you know, I don't, I do think there's a place for medical tests and I think they can be life-saving. But for me, I was in this period of time where I just felt bad <laughs> about all of those experiences. And then something happened. This was only like a week long sort of mini crisis, but something happened and I woke from the trance. And that's when I started to hear my guidance. And when I woke from that fear trance, I had to tell myself, everything's going to be okay. You will be fine. You know, and sort of deal with that fear, the medical fears. And that's when I started to listen to the inner voices and the guidance. Good work because... Does you can't hear your guidance when you're in that fear state. You need to have space for the, for the messages to come through clearly as well, right? Right. And I, sh I share that, you know, and I'm being vague about what it was I was getting tested for because it sort of doesn't really matter. But when people are going through a lot of medical procedures for whatever reason, it's easy to get swept up in that. And I think it's important to take time and space and emotional space to say, okay, you know, I will be okay, you know, breathe, take a moment, and just to feel empowered to say, I have permission to delay this test if that feels right, not delay it if it doesn't feel right. Sometimes there are these sort of schedules where if you're involved with doctors, there's schedules for tests at a certain age for different things. We can make choices regardless of what the schedule says. I just absolutely feel and strongly think, about that. <laughs> it's really that empowerment thing all over again, isn't it? Because yeah. you are not in your place of power when you have to do this and this and this and this according to other people's schedules. One thing I would like to clarify is that it's not just through medical crisis that we can lose connection with our inner guidance. If we're having a really difficult relationship or issues with our career or finances, whenever we fall down that slippery slope into the pit, it is more challenging to really listen. And also, if we do manage to hear to actually follow the guidance because a lot of times it isn't really logical. So I'd really encourage people to practice listening before they're in a crisis because they'll have such a better connection that when they actually get into a little bit of challenge, they'll already have a strong muscle that will help them deal with it. That's a good point. It's like trauma, whatever the trauma or stress in our lives can sort of be like static and we have to create sort of a static free space to listen. But say more about that idea of listening before there's something going on that's traumatic. What do you mean yeah. by that? Yes. Well, it's kind of like paying attention. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can get information. And I personally believe that we are constantly being guided. We just, you, we're usually too busy to notice. Or we're thinking about the past or the future, or what we have to do, that we don't actually take in the information that's around us in the moment. So one of the ways that we can learn to listen is by paying attention to our body responses, our gut reactions. I can remember, I used to have this job I love this job. It was a little part-time job when my kids were young and they kept changing the job as the years went on and they took away all the things that I loved about the job and, and left the tasks that I wasn't very interested in doing it, but I kept hanging on to this job. And the days that I would go to work, I would wake up in bed and my feet would be so sore. This was a stand-up job. There was no reason for them to be sore. And when I finally 
decided enough was enough and I gave that job up. I never ever have had sore feet again. Wow. It can be that simple. Just listening to your body. Yeah. Your body was saying, no, we're not going to walk into that door. (laughs) Don't go there. (laughs) You're not going to enjoy it. We get information through dreams. We get information through, I like to call them downloads where we just know, or we, we have a visual. Uh, Some people are more visual than other people. Mind you, some people are more kinesthetic, or sometimes we just have a sense of something that actually pans out. You know, I'm sure you must have had a little inkling of something and that you totally ignored. And then the next day you're like, Oh, I wish I would have, I knew this. I wish I would have listened. Do you get downloads? Cause that's a, that's yeah. a phrase I hear a lot in certain circles, which I kind of like, but do you get kind of like, when I hear that phrase, I think it means um, just knowing something you get information, you get clarity, you don't know where it's from per se, but you just sort of have a knowing about something. Is that how you experience downloads? I get downloads like that. I have a wonderful team of spirit helpers. They'll give me fabulous ideas for things and projects and workshops and, and why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? And then I just know how to do it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Amazing. That's great you get an idea whispered in your ear and you just know how to do it. That's great. It's pretty wonky, but (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know, when you start listening, I mean, I think that's possible for everyone that they can actually get guidance that's useful for them in the moment, depending on what's going on in their life, whether it's healing or whether they're healers or business people, it doesn't matter. I believe that there is a team to support us while we're here in this, this lovely earth plane and they do feed us information. I feel that there's a team too. I didn't always necessarily have a sort of certainty about that, but now I do because I think I used to put my sort of logical brain above everything. And that didn't always work out. But now that I embrace the idea of a team of helpers, everything's easier. And so one of the ways my team helps me, and I don't necessarily know the names of my guides or anything like that, but I will often laugh because let's say I have a question about something health related or something else, you know, maybe some other thing. I will find myself on these web pages. I'm like, I don't know how I got to this website, that this is exactly what is answering the question I had 20 minutes ago, or even 10 minutes ago. Or I'll get an email from someone, like if I get a newsletter, and in that newsletter, let's say there's someone I follow, you know, online, and I get a newsletter, and I'm like, oh my God, that's addressing the very thing. And it is sometimes very direct. And I will laugh because it didn't take that long and I didn't have to go on this like logical search. You know, I didn't have to go like, Ooh, I got to plan out how to find this. It just sort of lands in my lap. And I literally sometimes laugh out loud. It's very fun. It's not logical at all. And it's amazing. Really. It is amazing. So I have a logical mind too, but I like to put my logical mind off on the side many times because it's a whole lot more fun on this more creative, intuitive side and just being open and curious and willing to experiment. One of the things I would suggest to people if they're not used to listening, learn what a yes feels like and what a no feels like for them and then take a drive and ask, should I turn right? Should I turn left? Should I go straight? And just see where you end up. It's a hoot. I've gotten very unlost in doing that. You've gotten unlost. Unlost. (laughs) Yes. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means I'm driving. I'm by myself. I don't have a wingman or a co-pilot. And I don't know 
where the heck I am or how to get to a place where I recognize and can find my way back home. And yet I found my way. I have found my way home just by paying attention to my internal responses and driving accordingly. That's wonderful. That could even be a game. Absolutely. Another game I've heard described is that you can, let's say there's an issue in life that you're having a challenge with and you don't see an answer that's obvious. Something doesn't seem really clear as a path you should take. And you can, in your car, ask a yes or a no and see what happens as you approach stoplights. So the traffic, I mean, you kind of have to play with it a little, but you know, the traffic light, I've heard people describe this as a sort of yes, no way to have fun with exploring this idea. I haven't done that myself, but I just sort of wanted to put that out there with. Many ways you can play with learning to listen. And one of the easiest ways is through the body. We all have a body. It's yeah. filled with, you know, billions of nerve endings that, that communicate information. And our unconscious mind is aware of so much more in our environment than our conscious mind is. So it doesn't make sense, actually, to not listen to it. It doesn't. No. For me, sometimes I'll get an area of tightness somewhere if, let's say, there's an event that my body doesn't really want me to go to but my brain says oh i should for example it's like okay maybe sometimes defined as anxiety symptoms but maybe it's also the body saying okay there's something about this that doesn't feel fully positive or the right thing at this time you actually brought up a really good point, Michelle, because it takes a little bit of discernment to mm -hmm. realize what is emotional baggage and what is actual guidance. Yep. So if you have an attachment to the outcome, that's one way you can look at it, that if you were to think about going to that event and you didn't care either way if you went or not, then you would probably get a more accurate response. But if you were terrified to go and you really didn't want to go, your guidance is gonna to have to work a lot harder to come through to actually get that message to you. And that's not impossible. You know, when I was healing from my cancer and I would be in such states of really deep anxiety or fear state, panic state, you know, God blessed my guides on the other side because they would manage to get a message into me that was clear and fully comprehended on my part. And I'd be like, wow, you know, totally took me out of my fear state. Yeah, so it's not impossible, but it's harder especially when you're just starting out. For me, you know, I had a life and death situation that I was dealing with. So it was really important to get the right messages through. In our day-to-day -day life, a lot of the things we stress about are really not life or death. Well, I, I think you bring up an interesting point too, that it's a common concern for people who are starting to get in touch with their intuition to say, well, how do I know if this message I am experiencing or tapping into is guidance versus my ego or a fear-based message or like from an unhelpful source, maybe an old pattern. And just to have that awareness that there is a difference in tone when we get guidance that is from spirit versus our old patterns. Like I might have an anxious response to something maybe that is an unhealed pattern from my whole life and learning to say, okay, that's 
my ego or that's a pattern I see that's not guidance. The guidance will feel that clarity. There's a neutrality or a sort of positivity to it, but it's not the positivity of the ego, the other side of the ego, which can be kind of ego gratification positivity, right? Yeah. It's a neutral positivity and it's sort of this clarity. Would you agree? Totally. And uh, as people do start to practice, one of the most easiest ways to start learning their discernment is to take notes of, oh, yeah, I got the message to do that and I didn't do it because I thought it was all in my head or my own fears. And now I see that it's something that would have been really beneficial. So they can learn how to discern the difference. And for me, in, in addition to being guided with, you know, information falling in my lap or things like that, somebody I come across who starts talking about something and it's answering a question I had about what course to take on an issue, um, I get a lot of guidance from my dreams and symbols. And I'm going to leave that as a segue for our next episode because that's a whole package we can dive into like dream guidance and dream symbolism and what happens when we dream but our time is up for today so we'll leave that for next time one of my favorite things is dreaming so i'm really excited to talk about that michelle yes so we will see you all next time thank you for joining us and have a great day Bye for now. Bye, everyone.